Hey, what's up guys? It's Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions. This is a quick disassembly video that I'm gonna do with nothing more than my trusty Olight flashlight. This is the S2 Baton, and this is the Car K9. Nice little single stack uh, with a non-polymer body. I believe it's steel. Let's go ahead and see. Yep, it's steel. It's metal, at least. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and do a quick disassembly and a reassembly of the firearm so that you can see if this is something that you would be interested in picking up. This is one that has been on the, fi the firearm market for a very long time, but it is a nice solid performer from Car Arms. So stay tuned and we'll go ahead and get started with the uh, assembly and the disassembly shortly. <laughs> disassembly and assembly video with nothing more than the Olight S2 to be able to go ahead and field strip this. This is going to play a big factor uh, once uh, I am getting ready to go ahead and remove this uh, slide uh, release or slide stop depending on what you use it for. In any case, I don't think that you're saying it incorrectly. I am not going to judge you. So we're going to go ahead and attach it via this end and the magnetic portion right here. Apply pressure while putting the slide back. There we go, until this part right here is sticking out as a result of the pressure that you've put down onto the firearm. So from there, we go ahead and we apply pressure to the slide a little bit more to ease the passing of that particular uh, pin. That basically, it's, it's, it's the take down pin for the rest of the firearm. So you go ahead and you pull the trigger and there it is. That's the separation of the lower and the upper, okay? So from there, we take the guide rod and the uh, spring, apply some pressure to remove it off of the barrel itself. Make sure it doesn't fly off into oblivion and then keep these two together on the side. Push this forward, push this out, and there you basically have it. So. Let's go ahead and put this all back together, okay? We'll start with the barrel and the upper. The recoil spring. Now, the portion that has the two uh, port parts of the coil that, that connect here is where the shelf of the guide rod springs, I mean, the, the uh, guide rod rests on. So you wanna go ahead and you apply the spring portion, the other side, right into the slide itself. Push this until it hits the ledge right here on the barrel and you know that it's not gonna move, it's nice and steady. You take the lower, you take the upper, you align the, uh, the rails and you slip it back in. There's a small ledge here that you would wanna go ahead and provide some downward pressure to and it slides right back into place in order for you to be able to go ahead and put your slide stop right here or the slide release whatever you choose to call it. Now, it's not all the way in, and the reason why is because you gotta go ahead and you have to apply pressure back to the slide so that it can go ahead and uh, get pushed back in. So you're gonna go ahead and push with your thumb and slide this back little by little. It is applied until it sticks, and then you're good to go. Try it a couple times, trigger function, everything is good. Does it release the magazine freely? Yes, it does. Does it lock back with an empty mag? Yes, it does. Does it release? Yes, it does. So that's basically it. Disassembly and reassembly of the CAR K9. This is a single stack um, S&W, you know, M&P shield-esque type firearm. The only difference is, in all honesty, um, this does not have a polymer lower. It has seven plus one rounds and it does come with one magazine when you purchase it. It's been around for quite some time. The uh, sights are pretty different from most. You get basically the dot in the back post, you get the dot in the front and you have to go ahead and line it up. So it's basically like a lowercase I and then that is your target to be able to go ahead and hit. The, um, the trigger on this, there's a bit of uh, uh, you know take here. Then all of a sudden it just clicks very nicely. Go ahead and you release the slide and you bring this back to go ahead and see how it travels to see if there's an audible click back. And there it is. 
to go ahead and uh, hit the the trigger again. So, yeah, really nice firearm. Um, it's it's. I mean, it was a single stack, uh, you know, backup carry for many, many years. And my friends, uh, Lewis and Christian, actually uh, gave this to me to go ahead and um, practice the takedown as well as a uh, quick cleaning of it before their move with the firearm. I wanted to be safe in their hands and they figured, you know, why not drop it off over at Carlos's and see what he could do. So my recommendations for uh, something like this, if you're gonna go ahead and clean the inside of the barrel, use a foaming bore cleaner. In this case, I used a uh, gun slick and it basically breaks down all the particles that are inside of the, um, the, the, the barrel and it turns it into like this bluish uh, kind of colored uh, foam or residue that you can go ahead and easily clean out with some napkins or a bore snake or you know one of these uh, got, uh you know bore rods or anything like that so um, aside from that use uh, I use a ballastol CLP um, to be able to clean and uh, uh, make everything uh, nice and shiny it uh, it works on a bunch of stuff it's it's it is a CLP I'm sorry it cleans it lubricates and it protects and uh, most importantly, you know, it's uh, it's eco-friendly, it's skin safe, it's not gonna mess with your skin. And if for some reason your dog comes like mine and tries to lick your fingers because that's what he does every time he thinks that you're giving him a treat, um, at least you don't have anything that's gonna get him too sick from the bowel stall. Now, aside from that, I do use a little bit of grease on the rails. Um, uh, for the grease, I use uh, just a standard uh, Lucas oil uh, grease. It's called Lucas uh, Red and Tacky. Um, I went ahead and I applied some of this tiny little syringe so that I can go ahead and apply uh, just little applications onto the rail where there's uh, uh, you know metal to metal friction. Anything else where there's metal to metal contact, you can lubricate. But I think for the slides particularly, you should use um, uh, grease. So that's basically it, folks. Uh, that's assembly and disassembly of the Car K9 with nothing but an Olight to be able to help me. And I hope this was helpful for some of you guys out there. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to go ahead and email me at dailycarrysolutions at gmail.com or you can visit my Instagram at dailycarrysolutions. Remember everybody, if you EDC, think of DCS. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, subscribe so you make sure that the next video is something you get to check out. Until then.